Good evening and welcome to the City Commission study session for Tuesday, December 1st. It's already here, December. And I'd like to welcome everyone to remind you also to turn off your cell phones and that this will be televised live and then later on Channel 2. For our study session, session items tonight, we're going to have um, the Capital Improvement Program and the Sidewalk uh, Committee multi-year plan. And we're going to go ahead and start with the Capital Improvement Program. Okay. Well, I'm going to sit here and relax tonight. Are you? <laughs> You're not quite retired yet. I know. I'm getting there. I'm getting ready for it. Are you really? No, You're but I'm, uh, I'm prepping for it. No, Paul Kramer, our incoming city manager, is going to present the uh, CIP tonight. Uh, this will basically be his plan. Uh, he's the one that, when you ultimately approve this, he's the one that's going to implement it starting next year. So I feel it only incumbent that... Uh, he do the presentation tonight. Okay. So, Mr. Kramer, it's all yours. Okay. Um, and Scott and Dan Williams, our former finance director, were instrumental in this entire process. I would like to thank them up front along with all of the department heads. So the 2016-2020 CIP, what I'm going to start with tonight is a little um, recap of what the CIP is, how it's funded. It is substantially different than the operating budget. Just a short um, PowerPoint on the funding sources and how the CIP is structured. So there are three primary sources of support for the CIP. CIP sales tax <coughs> revenue, the countywide sales tax revenue, and general improvement bond proceeds. I'll have a little bit more information on each of these in a second. There are also three um, secondary sources, KDOT and federal and state funds. Um, operating budgets, those are uh, from our enterprise funds, refuse and sewer primarily, and general obligation bonds. Um, you can see the breakdown of how over the next five years where the funding comes from. Countywide sales tax is the majority of the funding at 32%, a little over $11.5 million. Um, and the other sources range anywhere from 7 to $9 million in funding. CIP sales tax revenue, that's a one-half cent sales tax, uh, city sales tax, no sunset on that. That was created in the 1980s to fund the library and community center buildings, and it can be used for capital projects and community center operations. In 2016, we're estimating just a shade over $2 million in this source. Second major fund is the countywide sales tax. Um, it was primary rationale was to build the Justice Center in the 90s, and as everybody is well aware, it was renewed for a 20-year period extending through 2036. The charter ordinance that we adopted at the renewal of the countywide sales tax defines its use as debt service, economic development, infrastructure, and capital projects. We're looking for a 2016 amount of $2.6 million. General improvement bonds, charter or ordinance 37 allows for bonds each year for specified general improvements. Um, this is where we're going to start to get into uh, part of the presentation for tonight. The, the amount of bonds when the charter ordinance was passed was set to 16.86% of city property taxes levied in a prior year. Um, and if you're wondering why the 16.86%, it was so we could bond a specific amount of money at the time. We believe it was $750,000 and to get there, 16.86 was the number is how you back into $750,000. And keep in mind that this is based on taxes levied, property taxes levied. So when we decreased the property taxes, 20 mills, we decreased our bonding, general improvement bonding authority from 1.75 million roughly a year down to just over a million dollars a year. So that uh, means about $750,000 less per year in CIP funding. It is also important to note that the GI bonds are the only source or the source that we've used for road resurfacing and reconstruction um, in the CIP. So if we were to increase our road resurfacing and reconstruction budget, we would have to find it elsewhere um, as our GI bonding authority has been reduced. Here is a look at the city property taxes levy. You'll see the drop in 2015 that we just mentioned, continuing in 2016. The red line below represents the 16.86% of taxes levied. The next slide will blow that red line out into its own chart, 
and that represents the General Improvement Bond Authority. You'll see the numbers for 15 and 16 hovering just over $1 million. What we have proposed in the 2016 to 2020 CIP is to change the formula and the amount of bonds and change it to 28% of city property taxes levied. And then we would also propose to use those bond proceeds for street resurfacing and reconstruction. Our roads are in bad condition. Uh, they need more than the funding we've been allotting over the last 10 years, 20 years, the same amount for uh, resurfacing and reconstruction. So that would be the proposal that is included tonight. To show this graphically, this is what it was, and the proposal would bring it back up to previous levels. Um, it would, uh, the, the budget is already set up through a bond and interest to accommodate this. It would just simply bring us back to the levels of GI improvement bonds that we'd had pretty much from 2007 forward. That's the quick overview of CIP funding sources. Um, if there are any questions on that, I'll take those now or we'll get into the program. What do you think, Dan? I have a question. Okay. So that, that last slide you have. <coughs> This year, 2015, so we budgeted 1.7, but we only got one, 1 million. Is that what you're saying? Excuse well, my think, ignorance, but. I think they knew. <clears throat> I mean, do we budget for this amount? Go down, and I think you're actually levying. Okay, okay. You're actually that bonding. was my question. Just okay. Over a million yeah. okay, so we didn't go yeah. over our budget in that. Yeah, we, we yeah. budgeted yeah. for that. So that, that one's okay. unavoidable. The okay. question is going forward, do we stay at that level or do we move back up to where we used to be? Okay. The debt service that we provide to pay those bonds off <coughs> remains the same. Okay. okay. Got That's it. That's why we're projecting to go up from 16 to 28%. Okay. Thank you. So if you'll turn to what would be page one, the summary tab. The first Oh, page and a half are existing or already approved CIP projects. Um, I'm going to go through those quickly. Some of them uh, don't need much attention. They're ongoing like uh, community center operations. But within some of these line items, there are some new uh, focuses for 2016 uh, through 2020. So we'll go through those. The asphalt overlay you see first, the a little over $9 million. That includes the increased formula. Should the commission not go with that formula, that number would be reduced. Sewer line rehabilitation, we allocate between uh, a little over half a million dollars a year to do sewer line rehabilitation throughout the city. Second Street Bridge over Three Mile Creek. That brings us to our first item that we need to discuss. Um, <coughs> that project was originally planned in the mid-2000s as a repair project. Recent rate events have eroded the bridge, so the bridge must now be replaced. The original estimate um, now needs to be increased by about $1.1 million. We talked about this with the commission a couple of months back in relation to um, funding challenges that we're going to have forward. Our proposal is to allocate about a quarter million dollars in 2016 countywide sales tax and then do a four year temporary note for balance and pay the debt service with the countywide sales tax of about a quarter million a year until that project is paid off. The next uh, on page one, economic development, that's part of the countywide sales tax allocation, as is debt reduction. Sidewalk improvements is the, the annual allocation that we use for uh, sidewalks and cost share sidewalk projects. Community center operations, again, an annual allocation of $300,000 for community center operations. Equipment replacement, that is where, if you turn to page 59, you have the tab. Uh, that will include new, new uh, items for this year. Those are vehicles that the city purchases as part of its replacement of its fleet. For 2016, we propose one police patrol vehicle, two police detective vehicles, a police canine vehicle, a fire administration vehicle, two engineering small SUVs, one streets pickup and one parks pickup truck. That all fits within um, the allocation that we have each year for equipment replacement. Next item down, animal control debt service. Again, that goes through 2025. K7 to Marion intersection is a cost share with KDOT. Storm drainage improvements and annual allocation. 
fire truck lease. We are proposing a change in the way that we replace the city's fire trucks. Um, in the past, we have done, we've had seven trucks and we've replaced them on a four year schedule. Um, the amount that we allocate for four years in the CIP is dependent on what truck is being replaced. Some are much more expensive than others. Um, 146,000 was the last four year allocation. Mm -hmm. um, if we get into an aerial truck um, or a Quint, anything like that, it's gonna be higher. Um, we're also facing problems with uh, replacing trucks every four years. You end up with a 28-year-old truck at some point, trucks in the 20-year range, running into maintenance uh, issues and performance issues with those vehicles. So the, the proposal that we have before you tonight would reduce the fleet to six trucks. We would replace three trucks in 2016 and bond them over 15 years. We would get rid of the three trucks that need to be replaced first, and then in 2020, we would bond an aerial truck for 15 years with a useful life on that of 20 years, and then in 2025, we would do the remaining two trucks. We have two that aren't that old, so they would wait till 2025. Um, through 2024, this proposal is revenue neutral, essentially. Well, it is. Um, but it would allow us to update our fleet, standardize our fleet, and get rid of the oldest trucks um, that we have and allow us to um, drop from seven to six. Um, we staff have spent a great deal of time on this proposal and believe that what we have before you is um, a good way to go forward with our fire trucks. Uh, public, going back down to the list, public safety communications is our radios. Uh, curb repair is similar to our sidewalks. It's an annual allocation. Library HVC, HVAC, uh, we continue to work on that project that was approved uh, previously and we will continue to work on that. Performing Arts Center HVAC, um, you can turn to page 43 for that one. You'll remember we've been borrowing, we, we delayed that project a year and we've been borrowing funds from that to pay for some projects this year, knowing that we we're gonna come back to it. We also heard last year at this same meeting that we needed to look at maybe, um, I don't wanna say minimizing the project, but phasing it and maybe cutting back costs to do what was essential at that, uh, at that project. So we do have Steve Grant here to answer some questions, but what we have before you is a three-year phase program um, whereby we would get um, the work done that we need to get done over three years. Starting with 150,550 in 2016. Isn't it also substantially less than what was allocated previously? Yes. Um, we were looking at closer to was it a half a million dollars? Mm -hmm. And we okay. were down to, what, 362. Three. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, there's just not a way to do it for any less than that and still have a system that would, that would operate correctly. And, and I don't have any problem with the phase, and I honestly prefer to do it that way. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, continuing downtown hotel debt service, um, that's our obligation for the uh, work we've done preparing for the Hilton Home too. Financial software debt service, everybody's aware of the conversion we've been doing to the new financial software system. Community center repairs, again, an annual allocation. Computer equipment, fire equipment, um, same thing. Downtown traffic signals, um, we continue to improve those. Uh, police, parks equipment, again, annual allocations. Fire SCBA, uh, annual allocation. And the Stubby Park the electric sign we approved, I believe, last year, which I, last year we held off because of the project at 4th and Poplar, um, it doesn't make sense to put that sign in while that, before that construction happens. So they're gonna put all the conduit in at that time for the sign, so the sign will then go up once that project is in the works. Okay. Biennial bridge inspection, uh, it's a requirement. Um, fire breathing uh, air compressor, that was approved, I believe, last year for, um, for, for future years. Replacement firewalls, that's an IT item. Upgrade city-owned street lighting uh, to LEDs, and I believe this completes that project, this uh, this $30,000 allocation. Fifth Street <coughs> Bridge Design, 
um, and the every other year emerald ash borer treatment um, for parks. So that is all the existing projects, um, and within those existing projects there's some stuff that will happen in the next couple of years. We could stop there if anybody has any questions on those projects. No. Um, I do believe we have uh, our Parks and Rec director as well as maybe the consultant who designed the phased approach for the PAC. Should you have any questions on that project? Do you want to halt any questions? Well, I talked to Steve this morning about that, so I'm okay, pretty okay. familiar with it. Okay. I'm okay. fine with it. All right. Okay. Let's go Going into new projects, um, Second Street Bridge debt service, that's what we talked about. We're going to have to um, issue general obligation bonds. Uh -huh. And the reason that that number is a little over 1.2 million, rather than the 1.1, is because of bond issuance costs. Uh -huh. um, sewer plant replacement of ultraviolet lights. This is a direct um, result of the UV project that we have at the wastewater treatment plant. Mm -hmm. um, if you do look at page 67 that shows you the five year <coughs> spending, you'll see that it jumps from 74,000 for two years up to $200,000 a year after that. Yeah. That's yeah. because we're receiving the lights at a discounted rate, still based off at the initial purchase, and that exists for two more years, and then the price of those lights dramatically increases. We are exploring alternative ways of maybe running one channel versus two channels, um, alternating the lights, maybe not using all the lights at once to try to get those costs down, but those costs are going to be with us, um, you know, forever. So as long as that system is in place. So that's just something that we're going to have to deal with. Paul, are we limited to the number of bulbs that we can buy under this two year? Under the two year? Mm -hmm. The, uh, the bulbs, there's no practical limit, but there is a warranty limit on them. That there's one set of warranty that runs from when you buy it, and there's another warranty that starts from when you install it. So we're, we're trying to load up with them in those first two years. That was my thought, right. is, mm -hmm. is to buy two years' worth <laughs> you know, under this. Yeah. We're proposing why <laughs> stop there in five years. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, at yeah. some point, there, there's no warranty on the oh, right. That's what I was curious all. about. But we believe that uh, some of the changes we're in evaluating and loading up on light bulbs the first two years, hopefully, we can decrease years after that, third, three through five. Because that's an awful lot of money, and they are a mm -hmm. single source light bulb. Um, moving down to 16th and Holman drainage, and that brings me to another slide that gives a little more information, and it's also a bullet point in your intro letter. Um, the Commission has expressed a desire to shift a little bit of the focus in how we address stormwater projects for the next, for this, at least this five-year CIP cycle, to projects that directly impact residential properties. Um, so staff has taken that directive forward and come up with um, a list of projects that we propose. Um, it's a pretty aggressive uh, project. For instance, let's start with 16th and Holman. That's the northwest corner of Limit and 16th. There's a drainage structure there and it extends north to Holman. We're proposing design and construction next year. The next one would be 16th Terrace and Thornton drainage. That um, has been a specific interest to um, a homeowner in the area um, who's been to the commission meeting quite a few times. That one does require more extensive design. We propose design in 16 and construction in 17. Um, we just don't believe that there's a way to design and construct it in 16. Um, but this plan um, includes funding for design in 16 and construction in 17. <coughs> Um, also, uh, in the in this um, same stormwater is Three Mile Creek stabilization. This is at the east end uh, near the trail. They need to stabilize, um, and we push the design to 17 and construction to 18. That's not quite as high a priority. We'll hit another one here in a second, 22nd and Vilas that um, we have on the fast track. Okay, I have a question about. Sure. A citizen contacted me, and she's had a chronic problem. Uh, Tammy Davidson, would the Three Mile Creek stabilization include her area? No. No. I that, that's more in that 14th and Pawnee okay. area. 
In the 14th and Pawnee, okay. All right. And that, that answers my question. I, I was directing her troops, and she hopefully she's listening tonight. And uh, which I just couldn't tell which project was which. Uh, going down the list, continuing down the list, um, <coughs> there's two before we get back to our next drainage one. The sewer dump trucks, um, again, for wastewater treatment and uh, belt filter press renovation that's scheduled for 2017. Um, that's the original 1993 belt press that runs constantly. And um, that's the framework is okay, but all the internal workings, they need to be um, repaired and replaced. Next, we get down to our uh, drainage project, 22nd Vilas. Everybody's aware of this to the west side of Henry Leavenworth School where the street has washed out. Um, the street needs to be reconstructed and there needs to be some drainage work done there. Um, we do have this scheduled for construction in 2016. So those are three pretty large um, drainage projects that we um, have on the books for 2016. Uh, next one is Hawthorne Park restroom replacement. This is the last of the park restroom <coughs> replacement uh, projects. We've done a series of them mm -hmm. over the last couple years. Mm -hmm. um, this would be a complete teardown and rebuild of that of that restroom. Uh, streets front end loader. The front end loader is used for snow removal, storm debris, um, and street material. We proposed that for 2017. Sewer building roof. Um, this is the original roof at the wastewater treatment plant over the administration building from the 1970s. It's been patched on and off over the years. Um, leaking is a continual problem, and we do have that scheduled for 2016. Cody Park playground equipment. It's the largest and most used park equipment in the city. Uh, we believe it's a destination park. Um, it's expensive. It's what these cost yeah. we are already running into maintenance item replacing um, items on the bridge we do have this push to 2017 um, but it's a big piece of big piece of equipment it is. sewer plant submersible common neuters grinders <laughs> grinders <laughs> garbage <laughs> grinders is that what that is yeah, <laughs> that garbage grinders for inorganic <laughs> material <laughs> that would normally would wear out the pumps the Before it gets to them, it yeah, will right. grind them up. <laughs> right. So we put, we did, sewer had, uh, wastewater treatment had a number of items. We asked them to prioritize them. This one is pushed to 2018 as we have the belt press and the uh, roof ahead of that. Okay. Um, the next storm water project is 14th and Pawnee. Um, Mike, if you want to talk about this one in relation to the, the property owner, um, why don't you just go ahead and talk about this project. This, this project was originally conceived in the uh, master plan we did with Blackett Beach in the 90s would be a detention basin north metropolitan on the federal prison property, which would reduce impacts to downstream, basically from 14th metropolitan downstream to Ottawa Street. Uh, that detention basin is basically not going to happen at this point in you know, the process, so we're evaluating other alternatives. Uh, there's a series of creek crossings that are undersized and creeks that are oddly configured that now we get to look at making improvements and this will be to study that drainage basin basically from metropolitan. Uh, it, uh, the structures are from metropolitan south to Spruce Street. What do we need to do to protect? Uh, there's about three houses that have direct flooding issues along there that uh, your property owner you, you referenced is one of them. There's uh, there's a couple others as well, one mm -hmm. immediately in her neighborhood as well as another one downstream. Okay. Okay. Good need to see you in a map on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Make that happen. Yes, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, continuing uh, Parks Mower, this is a workforce mower. It's our second largest one. It does the soccer fields and many other areas in the city. I believe it's about 10 years old and um, has become a maintenance item. Uh, the next item on the list is Muncie Road 10th to 20th. Um, right now, all we're budgeting in 2016 is to do the conceptual program. And I'll let you know, Scott, if you want to talk about this project a little bit. Um, 
we're going to have a larger discussion. We anticipate a larger discussion about this going forward. Um, however, that discussion would be better informed um, should we have this conceptual study done so we have a better idea of numbers of what the project would look like. Yeah, you pretty well noted it. Uh, this would open up, uh, as a residential collector road, it would open up a vast amount of areas, undeveloped vacant land to the north and south of it for development. Uh, several years ago, <coughs> I started here in 2007, we had that one development that was going right behind, uh, oh, geez, Wellington. 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 And uh, <coughs> we were going to do a benefit district to start Muncie Road to take it back to that development. And then eventually someday take it from that point all the way on. Well, it gets a little difficult when you're looking at a benefit district and are looking at the developer foot and the costs to put that collector road in from 4th to 10th or from 10th to 20th. So this is what uh, <clears throat> we put this in this, this budget uh, as a feasible project. However, we really don't know the cost until we do a conceptual plan, looking at the topography, <coughs> doing some probable construction costs to get us exactly what we need to, to do to uh, make this roadway work. You know, you've got some land acquisitions to do, you've got some uh, topography areas to deal with. It's not all straight shot. So uh, this $50,000 will at least get us an engineering uh, study to give us more information, detailed information on what we would need <coughs> to go forward with this project. On. And this would also be tied to some of our economic development initiatives. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, then we get into some just some minor repair and maintenance items. Fire station carpeting that we phased over four years. Uh, all three stations you know, need some work. Um, fire station diesel exhaust removal system. It's a safety item. It's also an energy efficiency item. They use fans now. It's it's it has to do with when the trucks are running inside the bays. This system is um, a much better system for for removing that exhaust. Okay. Is this for all stations? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yep. That's a lot of ground to cover mm -hmm. for a little bit of money there. Okay. Um, service center canopy over the fuel pumps. If you've ever been out behind the service center, their fuel pumps just simply stand alone out mm -hmm. there. Um, it's for, you know, guard against the elements, guard against the sun at night. Um, the, the canopy will be lit, um, you know, that's it, used at all hours. So it's, it's expensive, but big trucks run under that, so it needs to be a big canopy. That's why the cost is there. Thermac Creek wall and trail repairs. Uh, I don't believe any. Um, significant repairs have been done since the trail was put in place. Mm -hmm. This is some concrete fill under uh, some under to, to backfill. It's also to replace um, some failing areas, so it's just some standard maintenance that needs to be done on the trail. Would this help with some of that slick area the where the mud comes up or not? No. 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 Okay. Unfortunately, the way that wall was built and what's behind it, that's seeping <coughs> through that area. You got to leave some kind of seepage to be able to occur because if you don't, that water will push that wall right out. Okay. Well, the pressure behind that wall makes it kind of dangerous I at know, times. I know. Okay, now we're into the little bit smaller ticket items. Um, we'll go through these uh, relatively quickly. Fire rescue tools are essentially the jaws of life, um, essential for our, for our operations. Baseball, softball field upgrades. You'll notice there's not a lot of park stuff on here. Um, we did want to try to work um, some of that in there. So this one is for Southside Park. They're off First Street to redo that baseball field, which is a popular uh, practice field for that. Mm -hmm. There were two other fields proposed. We didn't fund them this year. We may look at those over the next two years. But in this one, it's just the Southside Park project. Community Center railing, this is on the west side. Um, it's what protects uh, before that dip uh, from the sidewalk. It, it's rusted out yeah. uh, needs to be replaced. Uh, police canine, um, that's a new police dog. Ivan is past his useful date. Mm -hmm. It needs to be replaced. Community center exterior glass. If you're entering past the cage into the Riverview room and you look out toward where the new flood wall is, there's a bank of windows yeah. that go um, there. And um, those windows are cloudy. Um, 
they need to be replaced there with energy efficient new uh, new windows. Woman pool slide restoration fits under um, keep in good shape what you have. Um, that pool needs to be re caulked, resealed, and then it needs to be resurfaced too. Engineering copier, uh, it's a big copier. We are combining two functions that we currently have two printers and uh, getting a new improved printer that does both of those functions. <coughs> Fire station sprinkler system refurbishing, um, sewer vector box dewater station, sewer pole camera, both wastewater treatment items, police body cameras, this continues our march toward designing uh, what level and, and working on police body cameras and the police chief is here if anybody has questions on where we are and what we're doing with body cameras. Why we use some of the other funds he has? Yeah. Um, we did for the server, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, community center security system, um, they simply don't have an adequate security system. This would increase the number of cameras in the building um, yeah, and the, the monitoring of the Yeah, of that those that's good and that's been needed, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Engineering uh, GPS equipment upgrades. Um, the world of uh, GPS continues to evolve and we have to stay with the times. Voice over IP telephone security system. This essentially makes uh, every phone in City Hall panic button capable. Um, there's no secured entrance to City Hall and there's also no pass keys to get in. Many of the offices are accessible to the public so this is a safety feature um, that would uh, be for the employees of City Hall. Okay. Fire broadband rotors and modem Wi-Fi. This essentially makes the fire trucks hot spots. Water, uh, sewer equalized. Wait a minute. Explain that. Sure. Um, to use controls. any kind of tablet um, or internet device before we use air cards which are unreliable and spotty. Okay. This would make the fire truck itself a Wi-Fi hotspot. Okay. So no matter where they are, they got the internet right there. Right. Yep. Okay, good. Thank yep. you. Sewer E. coli sampling <clears throat> equipment. This would simply bolster what we can do at our existing lab. Um, our technician would take some uh, certification courses to be able to be certified in E. coli testing. So this is the equipment that he would need to then be able to do that now in-house. Uh, gra garage tire changer, this is the one that char changes the large tires. So there's two down there, one for the smaller, one for the larger or uh, large trucks. Wireless land controller, this is what, uh, for instance, controls the wireless capabilities within City Hall. Fire station countertop sink replacement, uh, wear and tear. Um, they have some pretty um, good pictures of why they need it replaced. <laughs> Fire traffic signal activation LED for trucks entering intersections. Fire station radio speakers, this would go in the bays of all three fire stations so that the calls are more clear. Um, if you're ever in there, they sound muffled when it comes through the bay. Uh, Hawthorne Park fencing, um, simply some new fencing to control access better um, around the fields at Hawthorne Park. Fire rescue airbags. Um, the chief can elaborate on these, but I believe they're expandable bags mm -hmm. um, that allow better access for rescue and type of and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lifting. Lift. Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. Service center flooring. Um, that's in the offices. Um, uh, three three administrative offices at the service center. Community center pool light LED bulbs. Uh, energy efficiency and better lighting within the community center pool. Uh, a new welder for the service center. Um, the service center ice machine, which all the uh, park streets, all the workers use uh, to get ice before they go out on summer days. It's old. It doesn't have a lid on it anymore. Garage tool chest sets to keep all their tools. Um, the ones that they have are, you know, 25 years old and need to be replaced. And um, a fire station gas range, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's an, uh, a gas range for one of the fire stations, um, commercial grade. Um, as it gets a lot of use. That is what we have funded for the 2016 to 2020 program. There's a list of items below that that we didn't feel at this time were uh, <coughs> high enough priorities uh, or justified for this uh, round of funding. Um, that's what we have at this time. Mm -hmm. okay. You'll see for you uh, a three page letter. <laughs> Address to uh, the city manager and former finance director dated May 26, 2015. This sort of slipped through the cracks a little bit. Um, 
and uh, sort of our transition in, in the finance department, it was a request from Main Street for two items, directional downtown wayfinding signs and municipal parking lot signage. Um, they usually funnel this through the city and then we would fund it through a department. Like we did the uh, Haymarket Square benches. Mm -hmm. Karen did those last year. I think that request came through Main Street. Um, so these were two items that they would like to include. We did not include it in this simply because um, they asked us this afternoon, hey, did this stuff make it in? And we thought, oh man, you know, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't even know that this existed. So um, there is room in the CIP should you choose to fund these items. Do you have, okay, the suggested the budget for the first one is at $6,500. Yes. Okay. And $12,500 is what they're looking at for these two. Okay, and so it would still be the 6000 for the banners, the pole banners. Okay. Um, these are also items that you don't have to decide on this evening. If you'd like some more information, staff can certainly get that to you. Um, there are also items that you could fit in the CIP contingency, um, should you choose at a later time to fund them. Probably going to have with the second one is on the uh, 30 pole banners mm -hmm. to identify the <coughs> city's 17 parking lots. We don't necessarily have poles and that are existing there in front of some of these to be able to put those up. Yeah. So this that that's that ideas. would be that is just for the uh, banners. If there is a lack of a pole that needs to be installed to put the banner on, that's an additional cost on top of the six thousand. Okay, I think we need to know that then. Yeah, we, we'd have to go out there and take a look at the 17 municipal parking lots to ascertain okay. whether there's a, mm -hmm. a pole there or one. Can we decide on this later then? Mm -hmm. This will come back in uh, next week. No. Yeah, but, but again, you don't have to decide through the CIP process. Yeah, because if for the pole banners, I mean, like you said, I'd really like to know right. what parking lots we are looking yeah, at, right. you know, what, more what ones that would need more right. attention. There's enough flexibility in the CIP that if you wanted to spend some time to look at this and get some more information, you could decide, say, in January. Sure. Okay. To go ahead and fund it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we do like we did in the past. We go ahead and, and temporary or set up, yeah. set it up. But each one of these come to us again. Yeah. This Absolutely. Is, this is yeah, not a blanket, right. and we can make those decisions at that time. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to make you aware. Especially with this smaller, small of amount, but right. it would be good to have more of a presentation on this, I guess. Yeah. And it wouldn't rush you guys then. Yeah. That concludes my presentation. Again, we have representatives from all the departments who requested projects for the CIP funding. Should you have any questions on specific items, um, any other larger picture items, um, we'd be able to, Scott, Dan, and I, be able to answer. One that I've got that's sort of bothering me is your 16th and Thornton. I think that's the Drew's home. But, yes. <coughs> The plan that you're looking at is going to accomplish what? We've looked at a variety of plans over the years, and this is an effort that we <coughs> reviewed with uh, one of our consulting engineers that had merit, because the other ones were very difficult and expensive to solve a problem going downstream from their house. Better, bigger drainage pipes. Right. Sort of thing. This is an upstream solution to study if you can detain water up that whole hillside going clear up past Ridge Road, going clear up toward the top of Pilot Knob. There's a series of ways to detain the water, perhaps channel the water into underused basins or find some clever ways to do that. And this was an estimate of the study and what we thought we'd probably see for construction. It may be uh, less complicated <coughs> solutions such as drainage swales and small detention ponds. There may need to be some level of pipe. No, that's why we wanted to design it one year, see what made sense. Maybe <coughs> none of it makes sense. Well, I'm, not, I'm just sort of concerned of the cost. Uh, in actuality, this is taking care of one complaint, correct? Because uh, none of the residents near it? 
There, there are other houses that have flooding issues. There are other cars that were floated out of the right. driveways. Right. And in the they don't get the up. water in the house as much yeah. as the Drews do. Right. But the others that. have their properties flooded out. Yeah. This would be very similar to what we did over there on Eagles. Mm -hmm. When we put the big, large retention pond there, we caught the water runoff sheet flowing down that hillside before it right. entered onto all those residentials. This would be the same kind of concept would be utilized here. Drews goes, it gets the water inside your house, but there's right. other houses on a real heavy rain that will have their front yards and the street completely underwater. And there, and there are some downstream of theirs that are, that, that project runs <coughs> the one that's identified as 16th and Holman. The problems are not directly related to one another, but it is the same stream channel. And there are some homes in the vicinity of uh, uh, Vilas yeah. that yeah. have had issues as well that you can probably be able to address with some of this but uh, well if you stop if you stop the velocity of the water and uh, the quality and the velocity of the water it will keep from erosion of that stream bed some of the properties that are going down towards violence yeah. this is not a simple fixed solution it's <coughs> a series of smaller activities to address the problem that manifest itself in the Jerusalem's house. Okay. That's all I got. Thanks, Mike. And it, well, also, I mean, I sat down with staff and kind of went through this, what we can do to put this in, and then you can come back with the study session, the individual projects that we can individually look at at the time when mm -hmm. it gets closer to doing it, too, so that okay. we understand fully better what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Cause, and I know, like, the residents, too, that are affected by these are going to be interested in that. Sure. Oh, definitely. Yeah, any kind of engineering study is going to have to come back to the City Commission for mm -hmm. approval. Yes. And any kind of construction yeah. is going to have to come back to the City Commission for approval. So yeah. you're going to see these again. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. That's all I have. All right. Okay. I actually have one question going all the way back to mm -hmm. uh, the uh, baseball field upgrades we brought it talking about the field up there on first street mm -hmm. do you know if this is going to include uh fencing yeah. on the specifically would be the west side of the ball ball field third baseline no, we did not include fencing on this basically what this is if you'll recall over the past several years we've gone into a lot of our game fields and we've removed the old infield material that was just a, a silt dirt clay mixture and we brought in what they call ball field fines and, and we put that in and laser graded it in and it's increased our play in all of our game fields but well, we've neglected and haven't done any of the practice fields so okay. that's what this thought process is okay. that doesn't mean that we can't think about that especially if, if if we've heard of complaints or issues with them. Well, I myself, I, my, I've got grandkids, and I, I was assistant coach for a while, and we practiced up that field. And one of the main problems we've seen is you got balls that go off that third baseline down that hill, and it's a very steep hill running right into a road. Sure, right. And it's constantly happening, and the kids, of course, uh, had one little boy that had a twisted ankle going up and down that hill. So since we were making improvements to it, I'm just curious if that was something that should have been considered or, or will be considered. We could probably actually uh, add that uh, from our line item budget. I, I believe I have a fencing line item budget okay. um, of, of $1,000, something if you're talking mm -hmm. just, and that's a great, great point because I uh, hadn't thought about that hill right there, but you're definitely right. We yeah, just the extend. assistant coach is supposed to run down and get the crowd. <laughs> yeah. I, almost, I almost twisted my ankle going up and down that hill too, yes. Well, we could certainly run, run a fence line down there for that specific reason. I, w I would think that would be a good idea. Thank you. Does the commission have any thoughts on the increase in the percentage of the GI bonds? Because um, the next time this would come back, we'd be at a commission meeting for, for a vote on this. And that's the charter ordinance, so we're talking it would need a majority vote to pass. So we are changing a charter ordinance on that just for uh, you know, tech, the mechanics of it on that. Um, and then if you do have any concern on that background of the history, you can also 
it would stay on. If you, we were looking to also put in the charter ordinance dedicating it all to asphalt overlay. That's just mm -hmm. our plan. Mm -hmm. Certainly give the commission the flexibility to spend it how they see fit. Okay. If you turn to page eight okay. in your budget. Put the front part. Countywide sales tax. No center expenditures, debt reduction. That shows kind of goes up a little bit each year course but that shows kind of a level and that includes the increase to 28 percent does it not no 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 it does not mm -hmm. no that's, that's a separate yeah that's the 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 the, the, pro, the principal and interest on these bonds that we're talking about is paid from the property tax in the bond and interest fund. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's but right. This that's is, right. I mean, in, a, in an indirect way, it's all related. Uh, this is <coughs> essentially an allocation in the CIP to pay for bonds. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a connection, but it's a fairly indirect one. You see the breakdown of our property tax, and it's 12.9 mills is general fund 13 or something is bond and interest something along those numbers that's where the bond and interest is paid for yeah and um, let me just tell you a little bit about the charter ordinance first consideration if you choose to do that would be next could be next week mm -hmm. but it does take a majority a super majority or four votes uh, for second consideration, then it has to publish for two weeks, and then there is a 60-day protest period. So we would be looking at if we started next week, it wouldn't be adopted and in place until March 1st, 2016. It would take that long. Okay. So we would, if you do want to go with it, we would need to get started on it right away because it would take it quarter to March 1st if we start mm -hmm. next week. Okay. Do you want to put it on the agenda for next? Okay. 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 Yep. Anything else on this? No? Need any direct further direction from us at all? We've got time to digest, <laughs> ask questions, sure. consider, but this will come back next next week. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Thank you. For all your efforts. We have a room clear out there. Yeah. Half of it, anyway. <laughs> Our next item on the agenda is going to be the Cycle <coughs> Committee Multi Year Plan. And Scott, how are we proceeding with that since you lost Mr. Kramer here? <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, our sidewalk representative is uh, Mr. Hooper. Uh, am I correct? And of course, uh, the chair is Mr. Euler. Mr. Euler, why don't you so come on up and come up? join us at the table here? And I think sure. we do have. Are there any? Uh, yes. Yes. We have a few of your other. Let's bring Steve up. Comrades out there. Sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. Tennant, how are you? Fair to midnight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead Mike, I'll let you, Bob, I'll let you guys go through your proposed. Uh, yeah, I know you spent a lot of time on this, so. We kind of get the recommendation on our sidewalk. I thought we'd be doing a lot better tonight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sidewalk committee is a standing committee that was created by the Lenworth Commission uh, to provide recommendations to the governing body as for sidewalk. Uh, repairing construction in various areas of the city. Uh, they do meet on a regular basis, and that allows them to be involved in both long-term planning as well as the ongoing sidewalk projects uh, that are in place. Uh, through their meetings, they've identified several locations that uh, they <coughs> would like to see sidewalks installed or repaired, and you can see those locations on the attached sheets on your agenda items there. If you'll notice on those sheets, it identifies 
uh, the project is either repairs or re uh, new sidewalk. You'll notice that some of those locations are both repair and, and new sidewalk. Uh, also, for the uh, proposed 2016 projects and some of the 2017 locations, those plans are already drawn. Uh, they do need some minor changes to those plans and a little bit of work on them. But that's what we're proposing for 2016 is to use the plans that are already in place uh, so that we can get started on that project. Uh, a couple of the locations proposed in 2017 also have plans in place. Uh, with some additional ones included in there, and then the proposed 2018 and 2019 locations. Uh, we've been lucky enough that with past designs that we've actually been able to design on the head, so that's what gives us the opportunity to, to go ahead with what our proposals are. We have Bob and Steve here to answer any questions on, on how they looked at the evaluation, uh, and what their, they see as their vision for sidewalks within the city and around, so. I'm, I've got a couple. When I looked at this, and, and it is, it's, it's a big project, the, the 20th Street project, Eisenhower to Spruce, um, the criteria there and, and, and why you slotted this as a need for repair. Because we've done a lot of work on 20th Street. We have done a lot of work. There's a lot of areas along 20th Street that have trip hazards. Uh, the sidewalk has broken up in a number of places uh, <coughs> due to some settling. Uh, that sidewalk is also an eight foot wide sidewalk. It's more of a trail section than it is a sidewalk section. Mm -hmm. That's part of the reason the cost is so high. A lot of the ADA ramps along the, the route of that are not in compliance with current standards. So this project would fix a lot of the trip hazards, and broken sidewalk sections, as well as replace ADA ramps to bring them into compliance. I have to tell you that's very heavily used. It, it is, and, and, and actually that's what really happens. Anytime you put a sidewalk in, it does become heavily used where there was no traffic before. And, and I'd say, and I, you know, I haven't driven out there and really looked at it, which I, I do plan on doing, but there are trip hazards and a lot of places in town that haven't had any attention in a hundred years <laughs> on that, um, th that we're looking at. So, and I, I think basically probably where I'm getting at is, I know, I know you're using also the, cri the need and the criteria, but I, I guess I'm really second guessing or questioning, do we need to update the criteria and expand more on you know, some areas that aren't just always arterial and collector streets on that. Well, the criteria that. that are shown are, are basically just a starting point. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see a number of the, of the ones that we include mm -hmm. really don't fit those categories. I right. think we've uh, probably gotten 90% or better of the, of the ones feeding schools. That was mm -hmm. our first criteria, although right. we're still finding Mm -hmm. uh, pieces here and there, and of course schools shift. The, 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 the districts changed with the yeah, with the moving of the schools, the moving yeah. of schools too, and we haven't completely caught up with that. But okay. when I and and like you said, you haven't, you haven't gone out and looked at it. And the difference between looking at streets and looking at sidewalks, mm -hmm. you can drive down a street and go a block and say that block was a was a B street, and the next block is a C, and the next block is an A. With sidewalks, you can't do it by the block. You've got to do by little pieces, pieces yeah. and it's much harder to do. And you may remember we had an engineering study done, I don't know how many years ago now, it's been 12, 15 years, where they, where they did look at each of the small pieces, and they came back, of course that was prior to the sidewalk committee being informed, but at any rate, their recommendation then was there was like 94 miles of sidewalks mm -hmm. that were no, either yeah. non-existent or in poor or, you know, below average shape. So I don't disagree with you a bit. And if you come to the meetings, you'll see we beat our heads against the wall 
with some regularity uh, because there are so many places that do need uh, more support. Uh, northeast, uh, we were at one point we were told to, to back off of Northeast because of, and uh, as a result, well, of this, I have different feelings on that, gentlemen. <laughs> well, 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 <laughs> but I, I know you have to go with the flow of the governing body during the change. Right. 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 Yeah. You've got, you got another revenue stream yeah. for right. the CDBG yeah. that can be used in the Northeast yeah. Yeah. that can't be used elsewhere in the city. And you will right. see right. some, right. some right. of right. that being done this year. Okay. Yeah. And we uh, do have a project currently out to bid, which we'll bid tomorrow afternoon, for a project in the Northeast area. It's about a $300,000 project. Mm -hmm. It's repairs on 4th Street and then some east-west work. Those, mm -hmm. Osage from 4th to 2nd Street and Dakota from 4th to 2nd mm -hmm. Street with an option to do 2nd Street from Osage to Dakota on the west side. To get a, to get a walking loop. Right. Again. Uh, anyway, I don't disagree with you at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, I should point out that uh, in addition to Steve, uh, are we calling Steve number two because uh, Steve Wisen flew? Uh, <laughs> Phil Martin, Artie Johnson, and Dave Stoka, and I were all original members. Uh, Steve Tennant here and John Carroll joined the committee. Uh, in, it's been several years for each of them already. Yeah, but it's uh, exactly. And we go through a system of where we each, for lack of a better word, nominate stretches bring to the attention of the rather rest of the group uh, these stretches and then we vote on them we rate them one through five with five men we think it needs to be done right away mm -hmm. and we don't agree <laughs> uh, you know like, yeah. Uh, yeah. but what you have here <laughs> basically is the top rated ones yeah. where the, the group of us have said we feel these are the most important places to go right now. And what we're really asking for uh, is you to look, uh, and you might notice this year, the 2016, a lot of money spent because we didn't spend a lot of money last year. And that mostly comes from uh, concern about whether or not we had the finances. Mm -hmm. And losing the finance director, uh, we knew the money had to be there someplace, but so we held off. So we're basically doing all, basically two years worth of work this next year. But we'd like here at least tacit approval on on what we have the next two to three years, so we can go on and continue to get our engineering done. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we'd like your approval for uh, this next year uh, in order to get bids and get the work done in the summer. And then we're certainly open to hearing suggestions of, of, of other places that uh, and I can be happy to. We have probably, in addition to what's shown here, at least three years worth of work. Easily. That we, oh, yeah. that we didn't bother to show you because we re-rate them and, and because <laughs> schools change and neighborhoods <coughs> change. Uh, there's no sense putting 2020, mm -hmm. 21, 22 because odds are we're going to change. We'll change our minds between now and then. How about the, the VA entrance to Ohio on 4th Street? How did that? And then I'm curious, I, I don't recall that being in very bad shape. Well, well, again, how, how did that make the list? Do you recall? <clears throat> again, it's, uh, I think, the mm -hmm. VA entrance to Idaho yeah. Yeah. on 4th Street. Uh huh. A lot of the sidewalk there is in bad shape, and it's also got a lot of trip hazards at the locations where the sidewalk meets uh, inlet tops, uh -huh. as well as ADA ramps. Okay. Our overall goal is that really like, heavily walk, though. No. It, it's start to see a lot more traffic than it used to. But I mean, you said it. You know, if they build it, they will, they will come, and okay. that's certainly what we've seen. And our long-term vision is to complete that sidewalk clear down to the end of the city limits to connect with Lansing and uh, clear down in the luxury imports Eisenhower long term we'd like to get on down to there and then perhaps talk to Lansing and us complete sidewalk in front of the Hallmark facility uh, obviously we can't do it in front of co-op because that's Lansing but we yeah. haven't approached them because we're not ready to do that piece yet, but 
but the overall concept is to get 4th Street complete at least on one side. One thing that's <coughs> included in the plan for each year too is the, the cost share reserve which allows property owners as well as business owners mm -hmm. and the city to share in the cost of repairing or replacing sidewalks in, in front of their businesses or their residences. Mm -hmm. Uh, the city noticed. pays up to 250 a square foot mm -hmm. for the repair or replacement of those sidewalks in conjunction with the property owner contributing. And the city also uh, absorbs the cost of ADA ramps at the intersections if there's one that needs to be replaced at that location. And how has the cost share demand been? Uh, from two, we did some research and from 2002 to 2015, We've uh, basically spent $162,000 on the cost share, which is at a, about a $12,000 to $13,000 a year average. Okay. You might have noticed the uh, server pro directly across from the bank there at 6th and Delaware. Mm -hmm. Just upgraded, badly needed sidewalk. Yeah, there's some bad. And they use the cost share program. For 2015, right now we're looking at about $38,000 cost share. Twenty thousand dollars of that was uh, participating in the midday school sidewalk replacement on that location. I've got a question for 2017. Uh, you've got down for your top line West Middle School to Spruce North Side, quarter of a mil. Mm -hmm. uh, that's actually kind of the completion of a project that was started a couple of years ago. Uh, we've, we've got a sidewalk on the north side. There's a lot of repairs and some replacement of some old brick sidewalk, uh, replace trip hazards. Uh, and, uh, well, the, the sidewalk that I'm thinking about that's on the north side is only a couple of years old. In places, it's only a couple of years old. In other places, it's it's considerably older. And, and but going going how far east? Uh, about Grand is where the project stopped <coughs> in prior years. So from it's basically from Grand going west. But well, what kind of traffic do we I'm have on our bins at school is non existent? Not a lot of school traffic. I'm thinking there's better places to put that not money. Not a lot of school traffic, but we've still seen a I fair see a lot amount of, people of walk pedestrian traffic walking along the spruce. spruce. There isn't really a sidewalk on the south side of Spruce. Yep, I know. So this would upgrade what's on the north to make it. You may remember that uh, when we do the K-Link road projects, that K-Dot requires us to do uh, ADA ramps. Mm -hmm. You'd be amazed how much criticism I got for all the ADA ramps we put in that lead to nothing at Long Spruce because mm -hmm. they, there's a nice ADA ramp Right, and then what a no hundred years ago was a brick sidewalk. Yeah, now it's like grass. that. Yeah. Grass. Grass, yeah. So we've already made a major financial commitment by putting all those ADA ramps, and that's part of the reason reason why it was ranked fairly high with us. Sense. We've already spent all this ADA money over uh, over two years, actually. But aren't the majority of those on the south side? Uh, well. Probably we got a lot of more, least, yeah. half of them more on the yeah. south side. Yeah. But we're, we're concentrating on the north side. Right, right now, because it connects on out. Gotcha. It's, it would be less ex Yep. Would we like to do the south side too? Yep. <coughs> Absolutely. Yeah, someday. Gotcha. Okay. okay. <laughs> and then, like the EMS to assisted living on Hughes Road. There. That's a walking area? The St. Mary's College Is uses it, it a lot, it? And, right. and again, you'd look at right. the loop. Okay, I'm thinking, in, okay. It's just Different in front of the nursing home okay. there. It's All the right. one little piece okay. that's oh, missing okay. from that entire right. entire. Okay, that's okay. I have the wrong place in mind. That's okay. okay. Like I said, yeah. I got maps. I was on the wrong Because I have a hard time <laughs> keeping it straight in my mind or something. Okay. They have to give us a map every year because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we always forget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a very small piece that completes a loop. All right, I think we grilled you enough. Here. Well, it's okay. <laughs> I just assure you that um, I know you've got a lot of uh, committees and boards in this in, that work uh, with you and for you, but this is a very active group. We meet typically 10 times a year for an hour to an hour and a half each, mm -hmm. and uh, 
I say it's one of the meetings I enjoy going to because we often disagree, but we never leave without coming to a consensus. I think the fair way to say it is disagreeing is not disagreeable. <laughs> and, uh, you know, where we might have different opinions about how to best um, select what's next, mm -hmm. uh, the one thing we, we do are, and are scrupulous about is trying to assure we are following commission's standards and requirements mm -hmm. in, 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 for wrecking and stacking these. So we, we don't make it up. Right. It's what you tell us you want is what we wind up talking about in the meetings. And the levers that you've used in the past uh, have largely been uh, changing proportion of new work to the construction work, for example, or telling us to increase the amount in cost share, for example. Uh, go, do not go to the northeast. Go to the northeast. Mm -hmm. it, we take that as as uh, as the limits. We don't go outside of what you prescribe. So. And if we disagree, it's primarily because we're all passionate about it, and we okay. know that even though we've put in how many miles since uh, did well, you figure, last, Steve? The last time I calculated it, we were over 10, and that was like two years ago. Yeah. yeah. But when we started with 97, yeah. 10 is just a good start. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, since we've had a lot of changes in the commission since you've had last input, I would really like the commission to look at the criteria and address this and especially yeah. for I would agree with that. Thank you. I would agree with <laughs> Thank that. you for that support. So mm -hmm. you need to put this on a study session, so okay. And then of we course for we, you. we would <laughs> like you gentlemen or all of you your committee to come and, you know, give your input and stuff like that so that, you know, Definitely. like I said that we come to it. I think it's just something that we need to visit and, and update from time to time with you too. Because, like you said, many things have changed in our community, too. Yes. But one thing that remains constant is uh, when we fix sidewalks up, you find people walking on them. Yeah. And I say all you have to do is look at the history. Northeast, 100, 150 years ago, had sidewalks on both sides Every of the Sarah. street. Everywhere. Well, yeah. Why? Because people walked to the grocery store, they walked to school, mm -hmm. and most of them walked to work. Mm -hmm. And you watch the progress of the town in post-World War II, Everybody got a car, and why on earth would you want a sidewalk? Get in your car and go. Yeah. And now it's considered uh, a quality of life issue. Mm -hmm. And we are criticized because when people come to this town thinking about locating in this town, and they say, what happened to your sidewalks? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, no, it's true, yeah. Because we've even gone into that phase where not only are there not sidewalks, there's not curb and gutter. And yeah, like my street. That, that, and that was yeah, for the record, a no, development philosophy back there's then. There's no which sidewalk on my street. I, 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 which I told a lot of that. I've been here for over 10 yeah. years. So yeah. I have no. a gap to sidewalk on mine right across from my house. Yeah. And I, I get no priority on our own property. Yeah. Yeah. But we'd be happy to meet with you. Okay, all right. All right. And we'll, we'll work. We'll work for that effort there to get that on a study session. And thank you so much. All it does show too is that there's a lot of need and never enough money too, which makes the job difficult. Mm -hmm. Just thank you for your, your help in these difficult decisions. And we do have your approval to go ahead on, at least on the top out of Top part of the list, knowing the bottom. Do you, are, okay, do I consensus that you at least want to go forward with the 2016? Yes. I looked at them. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah we've already put the work in. It's already there. I think we should go ahead and, and okay. look at the 2016, let it go, and then start maybe us meeting and finding out the criteria for the future. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's the direction. Then, thank so. you guys thank for you your again. hard work. Yes, thank you. Okay. Thank you. All righty. That is the end of our agenda items for the evening. And since it's a study session, that's all that there can be, so I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> I had a motion and a second to adjourn. Begin voting with Commissioner Dedeke. Aye. 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 And we are adjourned.